When you pick up a Kate Morton book, you always know you're about to be treated to a deliciously rich world full of long hidden family secrets, multiple timelines and gorgeous country settings. And let me tell you, The Clockmaker's Daughter has all of these things in spades. This book follows multiple generations of people living at Birchwood Manor, a grand and seemingly haunted manor house in the Oxfordshire countryside. But while you won't be able to find Birchwood Manor on any map, it turns out it's not entirely fictional. Kate Morden actually based her inspiration for this manor house on the lovely Kelmscott Manor here in the Cotswolds. This was the house that was once lived in by the designer William Morris, and he loved the house so much it was an inspiration for a lot of his work. Just like in this book, the artist Edward Radcliffe is so taken with Birch Manor the second he first sees it one night that he knows he has to live there and it inspires him in his work. So being here and exploring this gorgeous old house, I really feel like I'm being sucked into the story. So as I explore, I'm going to tell you about some of the key characters in The Clockmaker's Daughter. There are a lot more characters, there are a lot more to keep track of, but they all come together as pieces of the most incredible puzzle. It is just so gorgeous here. So in the present day we have Elodie who lives in London and works as an archivist and one day at work she discovers a satchel containing two seemingly unrelated items, a sepia photograph of a beautiful woman and a sketch of a manor house that she is sure she recognises from the stories that her mum used to tell her as a child. And then there's the artist Edward Radcliffe who lived at the manor back in the summer of 1862 and he I imagine was inspired by William Morris who lived here in this bedroom, this was his bed. Fans of William Morris will just love it here, all of the amazing embroideries and tapestries and wallpaper all over the place, just gorgeous. This is so fun, who can resist a secret passageway? Plenty of secret hidden places in the book, so you're definitely going to enjoy those. And then, of course, there's the clockmaker's daughter, the mysterious and timeless woman who's always lived at the manor and narrates the story and introduces us to all the people who've lived there over the last 150 years. That's making me feel a bit ghostly. Let's go back outside. Okay, so you have to visit Kelmscott Manor, it is so completely beautiful, and especially having just read The Clockmaker's Daughter. Kate Morton's writing is just so descriptive, I was so completely absorbed in this book, in all of the characters and all of the places, and just now, walking around Kelmscott Manor, it felt like I'd stepped into the book and was walking around Bertrand Manor. I felt like I could visualise the characters as I was walking around, I could see the places where they'd done certain things, and I felt like I was living through all of the timelines in this book all at once. And it's also so clever how she fit all of those different timelines together. I think I'm going to have to ask her how she did it. So I'm just waiting to meet Kate Morton and ask her all my burning questions and I thought where better to meet her than through this rather mysterious gate outside our office which actually does get a special mention in the book. Kate Morton is always so good at creating a sense of place in her novels and it's been so much fun reading this one with all the talks of Elodie walking around London on these roads that I just know so well. And of course, obviously my favourite part was when she comes to visit a friend working at a publisher on New Wharf Road, I know where that is, and they go for lunch through a tall locked gate. Well I've just come through that tall locked gate and it does feel rather like stepping into a book. So I am here now with Kate Morton herself. Very exciting to be sitting here in a place that was actually featured in the book. It was <laughs> rather magical. Helm Scott Manor was obviously one of the big inspirations and I've just been there and it felt like stepping into the book. It was just I could visualise everything there. What were the other inspirations? Well, I am a lover of houses. Um, I don't think that will have passed beneath anybody's notice. So I never miss an opportunity to visit a stately home if I can. There were so many inspirations uh, in The Clockmaker's Daughter. Uh, Avebury Manor is, is, is a great example because, I mean, not only is it a beautiful manor, but set where it is within the, the prehistoric henges, there's just this really tangible sense of the layers of time, which of course is my absolute favorite theme. I always get this feeling, and I I'm imagining that you do as well from what you're saying. When I'm walking around old sites, I feel like time all just happened all at once instead of being on my timeline. I feel like I'm walking along the road at the same time as everyone else from yes. history. And that's completely what I got from reading this book. <sighs> that's music to my ears. I absolutely <laughs> love that feeling. I love the sense that our narrator, Birdie Bell, witnessed all of them in a sense and is yeah. able to tell all of them. And so even though they take place over the course of 150 mm. years within the book, they're, they're almost layered, you know, one upon 
the yeah. other. Before I ever type chapter one and start working on the book itself, I scribble and scribble in copious notebooks for months and months and months um, all the ideas and the things that interest me because I have great faith that um, the ideas that are supposed to connect will connect. It's almost like uh, collecting little tiny pieces of a jigsaw puzzle and then pulling them all out and saying, oh, these ones these yeah. ones look as if they might go together. I'm sort of picturing a kind of Sherlock Holmesian wall <laughs> of like post-its collected by string. Is there anything like that in your writing room? Not physically, but inside here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do you write each timeline one at a time or jump between them? Actually, The Clockmaker's Daughter is the very first time I've ever not written in order that the reader mm. approaches the book. I actually had all of the historical, the various historical storylines open as files at once. And so I would sort of dip back and forth right. and that really worked with the clockmaker's daughter because um, the the narrator Birdie Bell has uh, is privy to all of these different timelines and stories um, I didn't write her until the very end and it meant that when I was sort of embodying her I too was privy to all of those storylines yeah. because I'd already written them so so in a sense I'd already lived all of those so I was yeah. able to um, take her almost omniscient viewpoint and finally can yes. you give us any hints on what's coming up next I wish I could I'm very uh, this frustrates me more mm. than it frustrates anybody else but I'm really uh, monogamous when it comes to my books so yeah. uh, until the clockmaker's daughter is completely um, put to rest mm. I, I can't move on even though um, Without fail, I buy a new notebook the day after I submit Do the you? final draft. Oh, always. Well, I couldn't bear not to have one. It makes yeah, me get... Um, just in case something comes to you. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, but I can't wait to see what does come next. <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> so do pick up a copy of The Clockmaker's Daughter, a really wonderful book from the always brilliant Kate Morton. And of course, do subscribe to this channel. We post new videos every Thursday. And next week, we're having a look at the book behind the new movie, A Simple Favour. And give this video a thumbs up and comment below if you are as big a Kate Morton fan as I am. See you next time.